Yeah, welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live Saturday Night Edition. <laughs> Why you always got some wild hat on, man? Don't hate, man. Every man, time I, you first start, of all, you got some wild hat on. I, man. I gotta show support, man. The Navy midshipman, you know, put a beating on the Air Force today, thirty-four okay, to okay. seven. So you all know, right, we, right. they undefeated five and zero. Oh, so I gotta represent, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, I respect that. Army's five and oh two, so you know, number one in the number one in the conference. So yeah, too bad you don't you don't you don't put on I don't, I don't what you, know what you don't listen. I'm I'm good for them as long as they're not playing the Irish, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they play Notre Dame, then you know that is what that is, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. hope the army smack Notre Dame, boy. No, that's not that'll, gonna happen, man. That'll be great. I want to see your not face going like to happen. Everything's gonna change for you, B. <laughs> You're like, man, no, man, it's army, go army, you know, <laughs> hydrate, hydrate, <laughs> drink water, drink water. <laughs> oh, man. All right. For those of y'all uh, just checking in, actually, nobody's checking in right now. So we're just going to chill for a few minutes and we're going to kick it till um till we get a little more uh, traffic in the chat. But um, what's good, fellas? What's happening? G, what's good? Cooler, man. Maintaining it. Bicking back and being bull. What's it look like? He, he ain't got he ain't got the stunners on today. Hey, hey. Oh yeah, he uh he tried <laughs> Shannon Sharp me and shit. Ain't <laughs> hey, nobody tried Shannon What's Sharp. What's good, Snee? He wrote an email to corporate uh, for me. <laughs> hey, we, <laughs> hey man, we got we got to let the people know, man. This is a serious <laughs> podcast to be taken seriously. <laughs> Hey, said he went. He went back to his locker and he saw that letter on the table uh, on, the, on his locker. He got report to the got front that, office. Got that fine real quick. Uh, uh man, what's up, Sneed? Salam, brother. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Always good to see you in here. Um, we're just gonna uh, take a few minutes here and uh, see if we get a little bit of traffic in, and then we go ahead and start going, man. Got got oh, definitely have some interesting things to talk about. So you know, um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, man. Freaking Saturday afternoon, man. It's been raining on and off all day, man. How the weather up there in BMO G? Amazing. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's real nice. Right. Say the same. Yeah, right. We might have another storm coming through. I saw that um come across my phone, so we'll see. I heard. I heard it was. Yeah, they said all the Florida on the target. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The whole thing, the whole state of Florida is under the. Under yeah, the radar. yeah, that that cone is big, man. I was yeah. like, "What's going on here?" I was like, "Damn." So we'll see what happens, man. I can, I can, I can deal with some. Uh, it is a fantastic discussion. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I can deal with some rain, but um, you know, when it starts really getting crazy, I don't know. Nino, Nino, what's good, my brother? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Thank you for always being in here supporting us, man. Nino, man, good thing we're not finna talk about you know who today, so I'm not even gonna bring it up. You know it's gonna come up briefly though, because we gotta talk about no, the no, no, no. Keep him separated. He didn't play. Why not? He didn't play. Of course he who, did. Who cares? He LeBron didn't James didn't play. No. LeBron James didn't play. No, no he didn't play. He didn't yes, play. He did. No, he didn't. He was on yes, the floor. That boy was in street clothes. What you talking about? No, LeBron James. Now let played. me know you didn't watch the game. No, LeBron James played. Bronny played. <laughs> I'm messing with, is he not LeBron James? I'm, I'm messing no, with you. No, okay. I'm about to say, I know what. <laughs> I was waiting for you to catch on. I was like, yeah, I was like, LeBron James played. No. LeBron James did. played. LeBron James Jr. played. Yes, LeBron that is James correct. Jr. That is correct. JR played. <laughs> no, I was I'm, just like, I'm like, Bruce can't be serious right now. Like, really? <laughs> like, no, LeBron James. You saw that whole game really and you did. didn't see not one Bron highlight. <laughs> 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 nah, man, you, you know got, you got me with that one. That yeah, was you know, I'd be dumbing out sometimes, man. You know, uh, yeah, that was a good have, one. I don't have a whole lot of sense, man. <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's that army medicine they be shooting in your man, veins. That's, that's at not what that is, man. No, yeah, that's, man. That's not all, that all them shots they gave you, <laughs> man. You got the same shots, man. You know, we Bro. all got the same shots. So let, let me ask you a question because I never What's did up, ask this up. question to anybody in the army. So did y'all want like? Did they make it the hall of shots for y'all too? 
No. Like when y'all walk through, like they made it look like it was a gauntlet. It was like a gauntlet when you go into boot camp, right? Mm-hmm. And you walk through, like you got your sleeves up, you roll your mm-hmm. sleeves up, and it's. <laughs> no, it was. It was. Like just... No, it, Yo, it was crazy. Guy. Nah, it was nuts. It was nah. nuts. No, nah, we went and got our shots. The only thing that messed me up when we came out from getting the shots, we got back in formation. And um, remember this G drill song did a uh, he did a, a open ranks or no, not open ranks. He did a, a half right face. And we like, what could we possibly have done that we were about to get smoked out here? Just <laughs> <from the shot? laughs> but really, right. He just made us do the 10 push ups just to, you know, work the shot through your arm a little bit. So it didn't like bubble up right under your skin. Oh, I was really thinking, like, what could we possibly have done? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not that they needed a reason, but, you know. <laughs> hey, y'all got them shots halfway? You already oh know. God, God. <laughs> Dang it, man. <laughs> good times, good times. I'll right, tell you, man. Listen. Hey, Navy ain't no better, bro. We, we got the, they do the peanut butter. I believe it's a, uh, not penicillin. What is that? I forget what shot that's called, but they call it the peanut butter shot, right? And it's, mm-hmm. you get shot in the, you know, in the, in the rear, I'm going to say rear to keep it clean. Mm-hmm. Right. And once you're done, like it's one of the worst shots that you mm-hmm. guys could get. Right. Like I'm talking, all you hear is, oh, <laughs> on the glute. like when, when these folks, when these folks are taking it, pause. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, everything's going to sound pause worthy, but <laughs> anyway, after you're done, you know what I mean? You, okay. you, you put your uniform back on, you put everything uh-huh. back up. And they make these folks go sit Indian style on the hard <laughs> floor, G. Damn. On the hard floor. So mind you, I'm over here waiting my turn. I'm like, damn, I'm hearing these folks like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, the women yeah, screaming, yada, 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 yada. So me, lucky, lucky me. They called. They was like, all right, Bass, walk up. They saw I had my red dog tags. I'm allergic to penicillin. Okay. It was like, all right, go over there to the counter. I'll go over to the counter get these you know they had me a subscription and they tell me to go sit down i'm like wait i ain't got to take the shot so i'm like mm-hmm. all right cool man i watch everybody just like they they're trying their hardest like <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we ain't get that trying to sit down and lean on one uh, side man bro it, it uh, was torturous for him bro it was funny for me to watch now. but right. man yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> crazy oh oh man all right well let's let's go ahead and get started fellas let's go ahead and get started before we bore the people with all these wild military stories and whatnot. All the ones oh, man, we, we need to do a military show, segments. man. Yeah, we need to have a military stories, segment one day. You, know, what? You, you already know it. You already know it, G. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. All right, so uh, we got some good topics for you all today. Um, obviously, we got uh, some, some good uh, NFL games coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, two main ones that we really want to get into a little bit is uh, Pittsburgh and Dallas, as you can see in the thumbnail, and the Ravens and the Bengals. Those are huge. Uh, we got the notification, not the notification, but we were um, made aware that Derrick Rose is going to be retiring. He's after 16 years in the league. And uh, so we're going to we're going to talk about that. Most specifically, is he a Hall of Famer? So that should be interesting. And um, this the third topic is a topic I've. I've been trying to avoid it for a while because it's got so many tentacles and really it's a rather exhausting topic, but it is a huge topic in, in the sports world. So it's something that um, I think I'm going to have to get into. And uh, so <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the the drama in the WNBA and Caitlin Clark and all that good stuff. And, we, you know, we've talked about Caitlin Clark on this channel here before, but it's just I don't even know, man. It's a lot to get into. It's a lot to get into. So. We are going to, we're going to talk about all that. But before we get started, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't oh um one of the biggest games of the weekend pittsburgh and dallas that's the sunday night primetime game Mm-hmm. It's crazy how much primetime games Dallas gets, man. It is. But are like, you shocked though? No, no, because okay. they, they have a super popular um fan base. 
They the really Vegas. do. And um, yeah, they're right there. Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh is right up there too. It's like it's uh Dallas, Pittsburgh, and Green Bay. I think are the, the three biggest fan bases of of all these teams um in, in the country. So um, but yeah, so they got the primetime game the Sunday night, uh, eight twenty. So we'll be we'll be getting on with y'all and, and discussing the games right after that one goes off tomorrow night. But um, I think this game is huge for for both teams for for different reasons, right? Um. Dallas is coming in, what, two and two. Pittsburgh's coming in three and one, coming off a loss. Right. And uh, you know what? Before I even get into it, man, um, let's start with G, man. What, what are your thoughts on this Pittsburgh-Dallas game? What What do you see? Kind of what do you think it means to both teams? Oh, man. So Pittsburgh-Dallas, I think I went with Pittsburgh on this one. Did I go with Pittsburgh? I think Dallas? we all went with Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so – so, um, but lately just in the media, right, like um, – you see a whole bunch of um, uh, what they call it controversy within the, that Steelers camp now, uh, with Ben Big Ben going publicly talking about, hey, uh, Mike Tomlin, I want to be a better, bigger part of the organ, this organization. Um, <laughs> ben Roethlisberger, Ben Roethlisberger, the, uh, I think he's he may make the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure. No, he, no he's he, going no, to make no, the Hall of Fame. He's, no he's, the Hall of Fame. he's a two-time champion. He's got more 500-yard passing games than any quarterback in history. He's top yeah, 10. Yeah, but that, that um, legend, first ballot, matter of fact. That yeah, legend might, might keep him out for a little while. For um, what? The, the scandal? The alleged, yeah, the rape. Yeah, the rape. The alleged sodomization, right, right. I should say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the alleged sexual yeah. assault. But the, the only thing I'll say about that is that in the NFL, I think it's actually written into the Hall of Fame rules that um, the off the court stuff is not relevant. Again, I'll, I'll always point to it. Freaking Lawrence Taylor, crackhead, literally had to get him out of crack house on game day. And we can we can look at countless um, NFL players that have beaten up women, et cetera. And obviously, we're not advocating for that in any form or fashion. But the point is, the NFL is not I'm not going to say they're not bothered, but that doesn't stop guys from getting into the Hall of Fame. Big Ben's going in. There's no question about that. They're going to have to change the rules. But, but was he convicted? No, he settled it. Yeah, he yeah. settled. settled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I say all that to say, uh, good piece, though, Bruce, with your, you know, that infinite knowledge and wisdom that you have. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he has no hair like me. In the Hall of Fame with yeah, charges dude. or uh, a lesson. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's awesome, man. We need more of that. Uh, so, 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 yeah, I brought that up because he challenged uh-huh. uh, uh, Mike Tomlin on his really? decision making process in the fourth quarter, he said, You got a timeout, you should have used mm-hmm. that timeout. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, later on this week, well, early this week, he was just talking about how he wanted to be more a bigger part of the organization and such. Um, but th- th- this is a good part. If you're a Ravens fan, um, Geno Smith and the Patrick Queen is not really working out for them guys. Like the fans is like going public, like torching them, man, mm-hmm. torching them in the, in the, in the chats. Like, who is this guy? Why did we pick him up? His angles are wrong. Talking about Geno Smith, Geno Stone, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. And then moving to Patrick Queen was like he couldn't tackle a homeless person. Like it just, it's just like so many. Uh, they 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 just roasting those, those two defensive players. They played really well in our game um, next to uh, Roquan, of course, and then Geno Stone, who had, I think he had like nine interceptions one season with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he led the league one year. Yeah. But a, a, we know a lot of guys look great in, in the Ravens scheme and then they move on. And, you know, that's their right. But it doesn't look quite the same. Um, remember, you know, this better than I do. G. Patrick Queen was not good before the arrival of Roquan. He was going on bus territory. And then Roquan Smith came in and cleaned up a lot of things and made him look a lot better than he was. So, yeah, you know. so he had problems in past coverage. But I, I've never seen anybody openly criticize Mike Tomlin. Like this. I mean, mm-hmm. we've seen him do some dirty things in the past with mm-hmm. – well, borderline dirty things with like kickoffs where he tried to sweep the legs. Um, but I've never seen anybody like not not just not just not a quarterback that you share uh rings with or you share you share chat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um that was, that was different. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know, man. That's like uh I still like uh still like Pitt. Yeah. I got you. What you I got, think, Chance Woman? I mean, it's Pitt. I mean, uh to me, Dallas already has trouble. With running, running, running the ball, running the ball and getting ran against, right? So, yes, you're coming in Pittsburgh. What are they probably going to do? Run the football, and I think that's where you would think. You would think, right? I mean, you got Najee Harris. You're going to have Justin Mm -hmm. Fields. So I think you know 
That's if right. you're not if you're not running the ball at minimum 30 times that game, you're actually yeah. gonna lose that football yeah. game. Um, if you're gonna try to rely on Justin Fields' arm, it's only because you're down 15, 14 points and you know Dallas came out of the gates hot, right? I think that would mm-hmm. be the only reason. But other than that, if it's a close game, you should be running the ball 30 times. Um, especially mm-hmm. when uh Micah Parsons is officially out. I, mean, I think we we knew that that was gonna happen, and Demarcus Lawrence is gonna be out for I think he's on IR, or I think he, he just uh, may come back uh, in three, four weeks. So either way, mm-hmm. you're down two of the biggest defensive ends on your team, and you already can't run the ball with said guys on your team. I, I think it's a no-brainer here um, when you're looking at the field. Uh, the Steelers, yet are coming off of a loss. Cowboys, if they win this game, then they want, they're going to win this game off of grit, and Steelers finally turn over the football. I think that's the only way they can win this football game. So That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. Um, yeah, this I think – My bad, Week uh-huh. five, we did week say five. that yes. week five we was going to start to see a different Steelers. And so I don't know if this going to be – if they win, they, they if they do win, um, <laughs> we start to see them self-destruct. And they looked pretty solid last week. Mm-hmm. You know that they lost, you know, but they looked pretty solid. And, and Who did they lose against? Oh, I forgot. Um, Colts. Oh, yeah, the Joe Flacco mm-hmm. game. Yeah. Joe and, a lot, and a lot of that, you know, and because I, 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 I say this a lot, when you see – when you come into these football games, you come in with a scheme. You come in mm-hmm. with a scheme and you're prepared for a certain person to play. Right, right. right. It's supposed easy to, be to catch somebody off guard when mm-hmm. the primary focus of the football game is gone. Nobody was prepared for Joe Flacco. That's so right. I think you're, you you could also get caught up into that as well. Like your whole defensive scheme, your players are like, okay, you know, what are we trying to do? Mm-hmm. You know, we planned this whole game for Anthony Richardson, a whole lot of pass rush, a quarterback draw. You know, we set up our defensive scheme off of that. Now we got Joe Flacco who just sits back there, you mm-hmm. know, in the pocket. We didn't scheme off of that. So I think yeah. last week it could be, and uh, if they beat Dallas soundingly, um, it could show that, you know, last week was an anomaly because it, they just weren't prepared for Joe Flacco to come in that football game. Yeah, no, I can agree with that. I also think that, um, I think that you're starting to see, and I could be wrong, I could be a little early on this, but I think you're starting to see Justin Fields really kind of uh, settle in to the scheme yeah. and, and with Arthur Smith. Uh, he's not putting up huge numbers, um, but he's having some of the best numbers of his career. Let me grab sure. that. Um, yeah, he is with Justin Fields right now. He's he's three and one, obviously, completing 71% of his passes, seven and a half yards per attempt, three yeah. touchdowns, one pick. And you know, so he's not turning it over. He's completing at a much higher level, a uh, much higher percentage than he has at any point in his career. And, you know, he's still – has the ability to make plays with his legs, but they're not even, they being the Steelers are not even really using that yet. So no, that's a plus. No. Um, I think that's why probably, I say you should run that ball 30 times. He mm-hmm. should be included with at least seven, eight plays where he's doing something with his legs. I think. Yeah, so. no, I can, I can agree with that. Yeah. I can agree yeah. with that. Um, and you, I think you actually might've seen it more if Michael Parsons and, uh, Demarcus Lawrence were playing this week because obviously, you know, he would have to get out there. But that's going to be interesting because now, you know, you're taking away two of your best defensive weapons from Dallas. Not taking away, but those guys are injured, so they're not playing. I think this is an opportune time for the Steelers to get this win. Um, G, in response to uh, your commentary on Ben Roethlisberger and his – what he had to say regarding Mike Tomlin, <laughs> um, first of all, I get that he loves the Steelers organization. Okay. What do you play? Yeah. 18 years, something like that. 18 years, 17 years. Who, Big so Ben? I, I think it's about yeah. 15. 15, 16. I think it's more than that. But the is point is, he won two championships there. I get it. Again, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. So no question about that. But here's the deal. He's part of the reason that the Steelers are in this position. He held them back because he was garbage like his last three seasons. Very. He held them back. He should have stepped away and retired. But, Eight. you know, he... He liked the attention and he liked collecting those checks, right? So, you know, he he's hanging around. He's getting the money. He's putting Tomlin in a bad spot because the Steelers are probably the most loyal organization in freaking in the NFL, whether it's with their coaches or with their players. And so um, they they took care of him. They kind of let him stay longer than he should have. Belichick would have been cut the dude, right? You Out of there. Mustard no more. You got to go. But, Out of there. Um, right. Facts. <laughs> so, so, yeah, no so questions. Roethlisberger, he needs to chill and just shut up. Like, I, I really don't like uh, the disrespect that he's showing to Mike Tomlin in this situation because if if we're going to be real, if we go back the last three years of Big Ben's career and then the years following that, Mike Tomlin has been an absolute miracle worker in terms of the quarterback play that he's had to work with. 
and still not having a losing season after what 17 18 years as a head coach now that's yeah. inconceivable that's, incre- that's, that's crazy incre- belichick can't say that <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's like crazy. that's crazy that's crazy yeah. so we we have to look at what mike tomlin is doing as a quarterback uh quarterback as a head coach in pittsburgh is literally the definition of of making you know chicken soup out of chicken crap you know what i'm saying so nah man big ben shut the hell up go sit somewhere seriously and I'm not even a Steelers wild. fan, obviously, but I'm just like, what are, you, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And and you want a bigger role in the Steelers organization to do what? You bored? Go go hunting somewhere. Do what you do, man. Get out of here. <laughs> no, no, seriously, like, what, man, go what, hunting man, somewhere. When has he? <laughs> when has he struck you as some type of uh, football or, intellectual, yeah, analyst, right? Yeah. That that you feel like he would be, uh, he would be a good voice to have around the Steelers organization. Explain that to me. If you uh, said that about Peyton Manning or Tom absolutely. Brady or, or yeah. Patrick Mahomes when he's done one of these guys, got you. Got you. You say Peyton Manning anything, he's hired. Right, right. Peyton anything. Mm-hmm. Peyton, you want to? Yep. Exactly. Peyton, I want exactly. Yep, you got it. You got the job. Don't even worry right. about it. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> you, you got the nerve to be out here talking. But, um, okay, let me get off my – because that, that really irritated me. I didn't even know about that till G told me. But, um, yeah, back to this particular game, um, I am – I think I don't think it's going to be a blowout either way, but I do like we talked about. I believe Pittsburgh is going to win. That defense is crazy. I think they're going to get after Dak Prescott again. To your point, wow, Alabama can't stop Vanderbilt from running the ball. No, this they is cannot. Insane. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> distracted, but um, fairly so. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, so um, you know, you just watch this thing and you're like, man, you got to be kidding me with what we're seeing here. Um, in terms, I, I just I don't I don't. I don't believe Dallas is going to be able to get it done, but here, here's the bigger problem, right? We, we look at that. Yeah, ab- absolutely. You know, you're, you're right. Um, you know, they, they let Ben hang around too long, but again, you know, better than I do how loyal that organization is to both players and uh, yeah. personnel. But that said, uh, here's the problem. And, and check this out, G before you got on um, transformer and I were talking about this, Dallas loses this game either way. Obviously the schedule is the schedule, but imagine, they lose this game. Check out their next six, right? After Pittsburgh. Their next six is Detroit, San Francisco, Tough. Atlanta, Tough. Philly, Tough. Texas, Tough. Washington. Tough. That's a mean six game stretch, right? They may I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs, man. That's gonna be some good football, too. It is gonna be some good football. Three, but the wild card is games on the road. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're at home. They're in Atlanta. They got to travel to Atlanta. They got to travel yeah. to San Fran. They got to travel yeah. to Washington. And that Eagles tough. game is a toss up. Tough sledding. So yeah. And best and best believe Detroit runs the football. They're going to come down there and run it down your throat. Pause. Oh they, yeah. They are going to do it, that. Yeah. Get, you know, handing so, it off the Gibbs. No question. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't have a, if you don't have a healthy Micah and Demarcus Lawrence, we see Jared Goff can stand back there and slice and dice you. <laughs> right? No, absolutely. He can literally go perfect on you. So. I, I think I think the Cowboys are in big trouble. I think they need this win just to kind of stay above water. Furthermore, you know what it can be going down the road. So um, I think they're on the edge of playing for a a, a top pick, a top fifteen pick. If they so lose this game, I think then then they're on that trajectory because you lost another mm-hmm. receiver, so now you're down a weapon, right? You're down mm-hmm. your defensive end, your Lawrence Taylor of the Dallas Cowboys, yes. right? You're down Demarcus Lawrence. You have no mm-hmm. run game. But what the hell are we playing for, then? What's up, sports team? Good you know what I mean? Like, I, don't, I don't see us doing anything at all. Mm-hmm. Um, if we go in here and now we're two and three, now we got to play the Lions. You know, we got to travel to San Fran. We got to travel to to Atlanta. Now, if they can come out of this game, I mean, they can come out of this gauntlet um, three and three. Mm-hmm. I, you know, they're, they're, they can, you know, firmly still be in the mix. But you got the commanders and the Eagles still in that division. You might still not make it. Um, right, even as right. a seven seed, so you know, I think this is a this is a huge game for him, man. If if I see a lot of grit and grime, if, if I see Dak throw for you know three, I'm not saying he got to have a Kirk Cousins s game, but <laughs> three fifty, you know, three four tubs, and they come out with a win, then okay, mm-hmm. they got it. All right, they they figured it out. They got to you know, they you the, the game is literally going to be predicated off of Dak. Yeah, the Cowboys now That's sit on the- Dak Prescott's shoulders. Yes. And we're now going to find out, is he worth that? What did he get? Of course he's not worth that. Two, 240. 240. Um, six he might years, want to call Flacco. 240. Same well, man want to call hey, Flacco? He might, want, he might want to call Flacco. I know, right? 
Um, well, Anthony Richardson might not play now, so Flacco might start this weekend. No, oh man, Flacco is necessary in in yeah. in, uh, <laughs> in India, Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's it's just bad, man. And see, here's the problem though. This is where I know Jerry Jones messed up because even if they end up being bad enough to get one of these quarterbacks, Jerry's not going to take them, especially not after he just paid Dak. What are you no, going to no, do? Absolutely. You're yeah, not yeah, going to take the guy for what? Because I mean, Atlanta you're not just be did able- it, but you know, don't be Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, but there, but even though um even though Kirk Cousins got paid, he didn't get paid what Dak got paid. So it's all, it's gonna be almost impossible to unload that contract. So True. he's not gonna draft the quarterback. So I, I I don't know, man. Uh Dallas is in a bad, bad spot. So you know. Damn, Snee, Ben is a low quality character, trash can residue. <laughs> Why the hell would anybody want that in their organization, especially That's in right. regards to leadership or mentorship? Jesus, wow. what a I mean very thought out comment there, Sneed, bro. I mean, but really, is he is he that is Sneed that far off on this? No, nah, he's not. The, mm-hmm. the accuracy is there. Yeah, he's definitely there. Mike so. Tomlin responds to his um uh what he said on his podcast. I think yeah. Mike Tomlin is he's not gonna get pulled into the trap. And of course, any good reporter, you know, in the media sessions is going to ask that question. Hey, uh you know, coach, um, I'm sure you heard what uh, Ben Roethlisberger had to say about your late game clock management. I'm also sure that you heard that he has interest in being a, a more vocal member and a more involved member of, of the Steelers organization. Obviously, now that his playing career is over, what are your thoughts on that? And do you have any response to what he said? I know I'd ask that if I was in the press conference. Oh, so, yeah, you know, like, last year they was calling for a job. I don't know if you remember that. There was speculation on if he was going to return. I think this was like offseason or something. If they was gonna go a different direction other than Mike Tom. You guys remember that? I do. I do. Yeah. I do. like I don't <sighs> so I didn't understand where it came from. I was like, all right, what are they really talking about here? Because this dude's been yeah you know, AFC North. If you remove him, mm-hmm. who are you gonna put the Ben? That, that's the thing. Oh, I missed it. That's the thing. I think they're they're looking at it and they're saying that I think the the premise was they were saying like you may have gotten as far as you can get with Tomlin and you need a new voice. No, that's not it. You just need a quarterback. If you can get a quarterback, man, Tom, the dude is real deal. Dude is a, as much as I hate to be sitting here lauding the Steelers, man, he he's that good. But um, yeah, so uh Down yeah, Pittsburgh goes Bama. Dallas, this is gonna be this is crazy, right? Down goes this, Bama. This, hey, this can happen the week after a big win. Trust me, I know. Yeah. <laughs> This is a huge win for the Vanderbilt program. You see, they just uh, gatorated Clark Lee. Oh, I'm just, I, haven't, I haven't gotten going. that far yet. That is a huge. My bad. That Somebody go check Skip win. Bayless's uh, Twitter. It might be on fire right now. I know, right? But um, <laughs> first win ever versus an AP number one team. Snaps twenty three game losing streak to Alabama. Wow, twenty three games. God damn. Games. That's how dominant that program is going to be. But now check this out, real quick. And I know I'm digressing from the topic at hand, y'all, the Pittsburgh Dallas. But hey, this is a sports show, and it's Saturday afternoon, so y'all know what time it is. But the, here's the deal, right? The same people that were in love with Kalen Labor from Roll Tide Country last week, they are probably going to be calling for his head for losing to Alabama this week. It's crazy. Ah. Kyle, what up, man? I, you know what's funny? I, <laughs> I, I knew somebody was gonna ask me about that, and it had to be you, didn't it? Um, I don't know that it necessarily proves the depth of the SEC. I'm just answering this question real quick. I, I don't know that it, it proves the depth of the SEC. W- what I do know, Clark Lee, um, the head coach of uh, Vanderbilt, he is uh, Notre Dame's former defensive coordinator. The guy can coach. Really smart guy. He can coach. He knows how to recruit in a in an environment like Vanderbilt, which is a high level academic institution. And, you know, he got these guys ready to play. And also he just, I think he took advantage of Alabama coming off of that, you know, gigantic win against Georgia last week. It can happen. We saw it happen earlier. Notre Dame goes into A&M in week one, has has a big win, uh, probably a a career defining win for coach Marcus Freeman, comes back home the following week and gets beat by a bad NIU team. It can happen. This is college football. So, Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Any um, given Saturday. Any given Saturday. All right. Let's do this, man. Let's oh, go ahead and uh, say again. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking at the highlights right now. They, these folks is hype. Crazy, right? I mean, wouldn't you be? <laughs> oh, no, you absolutely. Must, 
Can you imagine we, the audio like, nationals never tonight? beat a number one ranked AP ever, ever. ever. Your first Can you album. imagine the party in Nashville tonight? It's, it's going to be bonkers. Oh, man. Yep. You know what, though? Shorty might be out there talking about hot tour. <laughs> She's from Nashville. <laughs> Spit on that thing. You feel me? <laughs> hot tour. Spit on that thing. <laughs> oh, Yo, shout out Bandy, man. They pulled it oh, off. They yeah, no, it that's off, a great man. win. That's a great win. All right. Um, dropping the phone number in the chat. 904-219-8264, 904-219-8264, and uh, it's scrolling on the bottom of the screen. Go ahead, give us a call, and give us your thoughts on the big game tomorrow, Pittsburgh and Dallas, one of the big games. Um, kind of what do you think this means for Dallas if they lose? What do you think this means for uh, Pittsburgh if they lose? Um, I also think it's big for Justin, Justin Fields. This may be yeah. arguably the biggest game of his career so far. Uh, yeah. If he wins this game, I think it may solidify him. As, a as the, the starter, um, providing yep. he doesn't get hurt. So um, I think he knows he needs this. Now, he can't go and try to do too much or be, you know, Superman. But I think he knows he needs this. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. I think it's going to be what, – what What time is this game? This is a, Oh, this is a primetime game. Uh, yeah. Last game tonight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's going to be a primetime Let's go game. Ahead. So got, all eyes on you, Dallas. Yes, sir. We got Sneed calling. Let's go ahead and take this. Yeah. Uh-oh. Sneed, what's good, my brother? How you doing? Bruce, what up? Maintain it, man. Maintain it. G, what up? Transformer, Sneed. what up? Sneed. Give them the comment section what they need. Yeah, man, I'm trying. I'm doing my part, bro. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So uh, I'm going to take the Steelers tomorrow, man. I, uh, I think they got something good going on, you know, Tomlin's a really good coach. The the Cowboys are chokers, anyways. They they can't win the games they need to. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna say they're gonna lose. You know, not that Justin Fields is is that great. I think he's decent. Mm-hmm. You know, with Tomlin, I think that kind of upgrades him a little bit. It makes him a more viable quarterback to find some wins. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, Tomlin's an overachiever. Tomlin, yes, he is. You know, you were describing how he could make chicken soup out of chicken poop. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I like that's that's a special trait. It is. And I don't know. You know, G was talking about how like there were reports that his job may have been on the line, bro. That was never. That's not real life. His job has never been on the line. They don't do that in Pittsburgh. You you get to walk away in Pittsburgh because they only hire guys that they know are going to do it for thirty years. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think so in the, the last you know, fifty years they've only had three head coaches. Like, who can say that? And and they all won Super Bowls. That's true. Yeah, there you go. You see what I'm saying? Like, so mm. there's it's it's validated it's yes. confirmation that they're doing it right. Yes, you know what I mean. So you know, and then I get stuck with Jimmy Haslam. Appreciate that, <laughs> bitch, for your old minority owner. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I get stuck with that BS. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and. But but yeah, and and then you know the thing about Ben Roethlisberger, bro, that's that's garbage can residue, dog. You know that 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 is absolute trash. So I don't I don't and and you know what, Tomlin's smart to take the high road. Yes, he's not going to win a public spat because no. these fans will always say like they're going to hold Ben to this high regard because he won rings there. Yeah, correct. You know they they want to celebrate these players. Mm-hmm. They'll forget about the bathroom stall incidents. You know what I'm saying? Alleged because they Alleged. Just remember the Super Bowl. All right, <laughs> if you say so. Well, listen, he <laughs> wasn't convicted of anything. Uh, I don't even think. Uh, yeah, I believe he the innocence is proven guilty. Well, but then, got, but then, why apologize if you weren't convicted of listen, anything? I'm not. E- all I'm saying is alleged. You gotta make sure we we preface that with the word alleged, because I don't have any dough to get sued by Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure oh. Nino's, Nino's uh, uh, you know, Star Chat is not gonna support that either. Right. right. And real quick, thank Good you so much, Nino. Chat. Appreciate Thanks. you, man. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying we appreciate Nino with the super chat yeah. coming through with the four nine. Shout, shout out to Nino, man. He loves him some Lakers, bro. He thinks they're gonna win the NBA Finals, bro. Because Wait, what? they got rid of oh, they got rid of Darvin Ham. They had a JJ Redick, who's the next Greg Popovich. Oh, okay. now they got Bronny. He's going to upgrade everything. <laughs> and Bron, of course, is a goat. I mean, now you're going to win seventy games. <laughs> I'm not you know, sure, Nino. That, you know, I'm pretty sure you exaggerate his words there, brother. Oh, my you goodness. know, I am a Laker fan on the panel, so mind your tone. 
Yeah, okay, uh, so the but the game itself, I mean the, the Cowboys don't have their best defender. Mm-hmm. Mike is out. Yep. Well and, he doesn't uh, show D-Law up in big out. games anyway, so I don't even know if he would if it would matter, but I, I get your point. I don't think he's ready to sack out too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. come on, man. They don't have I mean Oh, you were asking a question. I didn't know that D Law was out. I, yeah. I I I I knew that shit. All right, well, I don't know how you're supposed to beat a team that's that's got what three and one the Steelers, yeah three and one, and, and then the the only win that the Cowboys have is against the trash Browns that they probably could have lost. No, they beat the Giants too. They're two and two. They beat the Giants as well. Oh, they beat them. They mm-hmm. won last week. Yes, yeah, they, they, they won. Did. It was a close one, but they won. Yeah, it was it was closer than it should have been. That's a trash team too. I don't know, man. Just give me the Steelers, bro. I think that's a slam dunk pick. Yeah, I, th- I think so too. Yeah. But you know what? The funny thing is, when everything is on one side, that's when the underdog somehow uses to uh, manages it to you know to pop up and yeah, we call that big. Yes, there you yeah, go. Yeah, you're you're, you're taking you're taking. If this was like a ninety to ten probability, you're going with a ten, bro. That's not a good probability. No, no, no. I'm not. I picked Pittsburgh as well. <laughs> so oh, okay. yeah, I picked Pitts- I picked Pittsburgh as well. I yeah, I think. I think defensively they're going to get after Dak. Um, Cowboys can't run the ball. They can't stop the run. They don't have the two most important elements of winning. And, you know, Dak is going to try, but it's going to be too much. Yeah, I don't think – I think the Steelers are going to win this. Mm -hmm. The Steelers are hosting, right? Uh, Yeah, they're in Pittsburgh. Yes, yes, they're at at home. Yep, they're at Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Man, they might might lose by three tuts, bro. No, but the thing I is, like Pittsburgh is not high. It's not explosive, yeah. right? Yeah, they they're not an explosive offensive team. No, I, I think mean, they're going to score. Does, I think they're going to score a defensive touchdown. I can see that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. like a strip sack, fumble recovery, something like that. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you get you start getting defensive touchdowns. I mean, those scores can run up. Well, that's true. A uh, quick side note: I did see as well that the Steelers are putting together an aggressive package. To pause an aggressive package to try and get um, what's my man's name? Uh, Devontae Adams. Yes, Devontae Adams. Better. Thank you. They better. No way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Is, um, is he, so he's so he's uh, like the hottest commodity in the league right now. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. Just know oh, that he's out. Like, and, oh no, he's yeah. done. He's done. He's not playing there again. But I tell you what, that would make Pittsburgh really, really dangerous if they could uh, if they could get him him on one side and and Pickens on the other. Yeah, that would be that would be tough. That that probably makes them the best receiving duo in the AFC, right? Uh, uh yeah, 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 it does. Pickens, yeah, yeah Devontae does. Adams, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. But Jamar Chase, T. Higgins will be your second close, second close. Oh uh, yeah, but T. Higgins, he's probably going to be out. He's on the franchise right now. They're playing him yeah. on the franchise tag, so That's true. he probably That's won't true. even be there next year. They better draft a receiver. So you know. Yeah, I couldn't think. Well, of it doesn't world. change my it doesn't change my season's outcome. My Browns are straight trash, bro. So they <laughs> might as well just go ahead and do it and go ahead and win that chip, bro. Yeah, it looks bad. Looks bad. But uh, <laughs> I wish I wish Russell Wilson was still playing, bro. The, my team might have a chance when they go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I hear you. Man. Thanks, I Bruce. Appreciate you. you taking my call, bro. Appreciate the, the call, Steve. Thank you, brother. Um, Big Sneed. Right. Yeah, Sneed always with the great calls. 